This week's episode of Still Entitled is brought to you by Ops Genie because incidents happen. Thankfully, Ops Genie empowers devs and ops teams to plan for service disruptions and stay in control during incidents. It also gives teams the power to respond quickly and efficiently to unplanned issues. And it helps notify all the right people through smart combination of scheduling and escalation paths. With Ops Genie, your next incident doesn't stand a chance. Visit OpsGenie.com to sign up and get a free company account and add up to five team members. That's OpsGenie.com. Never miss a critical alert again with Ops Genie. Welcome to Still Untitled, the Adam Savage Project. I'm Will. I'm Adam. And I'm Norm. Hey, hey. back to uh, back to the. Uh, it's just the three of us. Just the three. Hey, of happy. Us. I hope you're. I hope, did everybody have a good Thanksgiving? I was. I was. I did. Uh, I did. How was uh, first Thanksgiving with the baby, Norm? Um, lonely because we didn't travel. I'm and sorry. It was, uh, we didn't go to family's house because some people had not had their flu shots. So oh. we stayed at home with the baby. Uh, my parents did bring over a turkey, so we had lunch with my parents before they went oh, to that's other nice. family. Nice. And then I realized we had turkey and no sides so i did the thing that uh probably shouldn't have been done but it really made me appreciate the people who don't get enough appreciation which are the employees of boston market on thanksgiving day <laughs> because let me tell you boston market on thanksgiving day is not a happy place to be for both the people behind the counter and for the 50 to 70 people well, there, there, was, like, waiting in there line. were like a million tweets and reddit posts leading up to thanksgiving which all said if you go shopping on thanksgiving please don't try and commiserate with the people who are serving you well so yeah so i had a really good interaction with with one of the people that was working my safeway because yeah. you, know, you like yeah you always yeah, having something having the grocery store open on safeway on, on thanksgiving has saved thanksgiving multiple times mm-hmm. for us and I was like, "Hey, I'm I'm sorry you have to work here today, but thank you so much for being here." Yeah. Like, I was like, "Hey, man, don't don't you don't have to apologize to me because I'm getting paid for like three days worth of work for being here." Today. That's great. I yeah. hope I hope that yeah, was I the hope case that's the case well. everywhere at Boston yeah. Market. You know. Yeah. So what did you go get at Boston Market? Just some uh, Twizzlers, creams, just cream spinach. <laughs> you know, they had like people who bought chickens, whole chickens there, and slices of turkey, <clears> and I just needed sides. I just needed like pies and cream spinach and mashed potatoes, right? Something that. I got my, I got everything I needed, mm-hmm. but there were clearly people there at 5 p.m., which is when they closed, by the way. Oh boy! But they were still in line. 5 p.m. Who needed turkey on Thanksgiving <laughs> night? And when the people in the kitchen said we're out, there was a near riot. And wow! And people were just like, How, "This is this why is why didn't you make more?" I'm like, "Well, why didn't you make a turkey?" This is you could you could at the very surface chalk this up. To American entitlement, but I think it's almost a a, a, a a bit of online over online culture syndrome of like everything comes to me. Oh, the convenience, the yeah. culture, of, which is yeah. entitlement. The, mm-hmm. Our entitlement today is about convenience. I, I was looking at something the other day. I was like, oh man, it doesn't have free two day shipping. I'm not buying this. <laughs> See you in hell. Well, you know, did you listen to the daily episode or the read the New York Times story? Because uh, I mentioned this on the other podcast, but it was. This, this came out on Monday, but New York Times had a big profile on the fulfillment centers, the logistics centers that now have to compete, help companies, retailers compete with Amazon. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. right? Because, because Amazon... Everyone expects everything to show up in two days for free. That's right. Well, have, and, you, have you been to the FedEx one in South City? No. I had to go pick something up there one day. And like it's like a, it's like a prison. You walk in, there's like one-way doors... And then it's just massive warehouse. You can kind of see through the gaps. I mean, like the, fish, and, like the fishbone doors. Yeah, the fishbone doors. Wow. Um, and there's metal detectors. Like they they scan your stuff. You have to check your phone. I think it looked like there was like lock boxes for wow. personal possessions. And then once you get in, it's just all of the stuff that's for sale at Amazon and all the places that FedEx does fulfillment. But like Verizon, Nike, you know, they don't have the infrastructure, or they're not going to pay for what Amazon has built up and wholly own. So they pay logistics companies. They're now billion dollar companies that own nondescript warehouses in places yeah. like Tennessee and that's why when you get FedEx from your phones they come from they come from Kentucky and Sparks Nevada thousands of people there are basically doing these jobs of picking things off the shelf and putting them on conveyor belts and boxing them up and the worst part is not just the conditions they work in which if you read the story it's like seems bad it's bad like 120 degree but temperature that's not the worst part the worst part is that they will be all out of a job in like five years because, oh, because these are robots. jobs that will be replaced by robots i you know that's one of those things that when you talk to the robot people though the people who make robots are like look here are some jobs that are never going to be taken over by robots picking berries 
right? Like that is a human job for the yeah. foreseeable future. How, how, well, that's one where drones are radically changing everything because as you know, if you have an apple orchard, you don't know what your harvest is until you harvest it. Right. But with drones and imaging technology now, you can do a flyby and get a complete picture of what your wow. crop is with any crop you want. No, no, um, soft robotics. At the Mars conference last year, uh, uh, Ken Goldberg did a, a, a talk about robot grasping. Ken Goldberg is uh, one of the heads of the robotic department at Cal. Um, and they talked about uh, robots being human beings ha can, at their highest pace, um, g uh, choose and grasp uh, 600 objects per hour or something like that. And that's off of an uneven surface. It's not like they're in trays organized. I think it's by, in a bin, yeah. Yeah. right? And robots uh, have. Ken's robots are up to like 200, at least last or earlier this year, they were up to 200 objects per hour, which is a massive so improvement over the four previous of them year. You yeah. Beat a human. However, there's some things they just can't pick up, like washers. Oh, right. Because they're flat. And they're they flat and they have them. a hole in the middle and they yeah. can't suction them. <laughs> there's no way they can pick up a washer. That's really Another funny. one is, <laughs> this is my favorite, a bottle of Hershey's syrup. Oh, because there's no good place to grab. There's no, the center of gravity is unknowable oh. <laughs> given that the syrup moves huh. inside. Huh. That's, That's interesting. interesting. And these are the problems that they're trying to solve right now. Look, I don't mind if those jobs, if those terrible jobs in the 120 degree warehouses go away. I don't mind that. We just need certain protections for our citizens, like a universal basic income. But I don't want to get into politics. People love politics in the podcast. Well, I'll tell you this. Here, here, here's your transition. I'll tell you the job that no robot will be able to do in the foreseeable future, at least that I need it to do, right, is control. change a baby's diaper at three in the morning that's full of explosive poo. Yeah, that, your, oh, yeah, your, that your kid makes some big poos, man. It is impressive. Yeah. That's a thing. Yeah. I, I, that is I, a thing I, I'm learning. I have, yeah, like, look, he has a gift. I've seen some, <laughs> like, my kid made some poos, but we never... I mean, you're you're like three months ahead of where we were at, at your kid's it's, age. It's important to figure out what you're proud of. I, yeah. yeah, yeah. Will I have to change my kid's diaper? I change your kid's diaper very generously. Yeah, to visit one time. <laughs> yeah, so you could behold the sploosh. I, I mean, as we I, call I, it. I was it thing. was I was impressed that the diaper contained it. And if you, you found was, your you found your match early, it was very good. And <laughs> if, if you want to know what life is like for me these past three weeks, it is a game of Russian roulette every time we. Check the diaper, and it's not big or small. That's not the game. There's the Russian roulette is whether it will happen again mid. Oh, diaper really? Change. You have that happen? Oh, yeah. And so, I never had that happen. They didn't tell me that. Yeah, we I never mean, had I, that with I our got, daughter. I at got all. peed on a couple of times, but I never. Uh, so we look at, we change, and we stare, and we uh, we say, "Don't, don't make it angry. Don't make it angry." We, we, we you just get right up and get your eye right in it, yeah. so you can see if see if it's if it's if it's twi twinkling. And we now our I shorthand so apologies to geologists is the Richter scale. You know it is oh, 7.0, 6.0. Richter scale. The re oh, nice because we look for after charts. <laughs> Uh, Norm, this is uh, you find the happy is, happy place. You're you're in the horrible beginning of such a great journey. Uh, the good news is that you probably won't remember much of this in like six. You months. don't. I will tell you that after you've wiped someone's butt a few thousand times, even when they're an adult human, it's still this edge of you that has a hard time taking them seriously. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's one of those things that like. Like so, my daughter's now at the age where she's starting to develop a desire for privacy when she's going to the bathroom and stuff mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of it, if if like if it's a complicated wiping situation, she'll still just uh, she'll be like, "Hey, Dad, can you give me a hand here?" And I'll come in. and She'll be bent over with cheeks spread, ready to go. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, okay, we we're like ninety percent of the this, way there. Th that lack of dignity is so important. I mean, it's, it's good. It's yeah, a really. Like there was a point at which, you know, you you go through the. I cannot believe I am moving phase, right? And it's just, that's just part of it, right? You're literally, it's 4.30. It's it's 3 in the morning is not as bad as like 4.20. The time it's, when the well, sun's starting to rise 3 becomes 4 and, if you can't get... And you can't believe, you know, uh, that you're still doing this. And there's that. And then there's the... I just remember this point at which... And it wasn't easy for me to get there of like, oh, it's 5 a.m. and we're out of diapers. I got to run. But that's and not I, a and, problem and, in the future. But you, right. Because we have cyberpunk. We just call and then a person shows up in your door and drops oh, some diapers. Oh, wow. Down. Yeah. No, I had to go to the, I had to go to the local Walgreens, which was always out of my size. I've said this before, but then the Safeway. And you, you just fall in love with it. It's just part of the, it's 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 triage all the time. It's bivouacking, you know. Yeah, you forget the of. nappy and they'll throw up all over you.
Yeah, I mean, it's the the moment you make you, you, the routine. The routine is the important thing, and the thing that everybody tells you and that nobody does, I think, at least we didn't do, is that they tell you to take naps when the kid is sleeping, no matter whether you need to take a nap or not. Especially, you're kind of almost out of that part now, I think, Norm. Um, I've but, been watching Netflix. Yeah, you no, you can't. Don't play video games. Don't watch TV. Just go right to sleep the moment you have an opportunity. No, I never did that. You know. Um, well, welcome, sir. Yeah, thank, welcome to parenthood. thank you for the parent parental insight. And please give yeah. our love to your lovely wife. Yeah, who I'm sure is condolences. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, taking the brunt of it now that I'm back at the office. Yeah. Uh, speaking of insight. Oh, whoa! Well whoa, done. That is an all-time top ten. Oh, come on, <laughs> it really easy, is easy. Um, on Monday, I was lucky enough that a friend had an extra ticket and brought me to watch the Insight Mars landing. Holy crap! You went to Mars at JPL. <laughs> oh, well, that's still cool, I guess. <laughs> Look, human. Four months ago, you were at the launch. Yeah, I, yeah. So tested, bracketed this. Wait, it was they. It went to Mars in six, four months. Six oh, months right, ago. it's the short window. It's the short window because Mars is only two minutes away from us right now. Right, that right, was right. The, that was the length of time. So, wow. Insight was a, 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 a autonomous robotic vehicle that JPL designed, sent to Mars six, four, five, yeah, six yeah. months ago. Earlier this year. Earlier this year, uh, it landed on Monday successfully. Now it landed on a part of Mars that does not have direct transmissible uh, 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 view on Earth, and so along with Insight, they launched Marcos A Alpha, Marcos Beta, uh, nicknamed. Wally and Eva, Eve. Mm-hmm. Um, Eva? E- yep. Eva? Yeah. Eva? Yeah. Eva? Yeah. Eva? Yeah. Sure. The okay. Pixar characters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 to uh, allow the UHF signal be, to be transmitted how, from how, Insight to UHF. Earth. That's right? That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> how does it not have line of sight? Does Mars... Mars wouldn't be tidally locked with us. So there's no, but is it just out of sight a lot of the time? Just out of sight for the first seven hours of oh, okay. the launch. Okay. And, and the MRO of the would landing. Have taken care of it. And it was because they needed, um, I think, a 200 kilometer area that was relatively free of. They had a very specific landing site that they needed to hit. This is the driller, right? Yeah. They're, were they drilling a core 16 feet deep? Is, is that the. Yeah, I think it's uh, 15 feet or 15 meters. It's 15 feet, I think you're right. 15, 15 meters would be a lot. Yeah, 15 feet deep, and it has a, a seismometer for detecting earthquakes. Ooh. And it's uh, basically it's a robot geologist. But the two satellites were experiments. They these weren't mission critical, Marco nope. A and B. And they are these uh, miniaturized cube sets. They're the yeah, size oh, like the of an old tape deck. Oh, they're, so they're they're bigger than the ones that we're firing out of the ISS now, but smaller. Yeah. And they Still deploy a small. little bit. Uh, what's really cool is that a lot of the volume in these satellites, which are a uh, briefcase or uh, serial box, uh, they have propulsion. So much like Wally oh, wow. in the movie, Wally uh, flies around with a fire extinguisher. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these the Marco will will do that as well. It's, much of their body is the propellant, cool. and they flew alongside Insight all the way to Mars. Oh, and they wow. had two separate flight teams, and yeah. they it, it could have been done with one of them, but there was a redundancy built in. It was really, really neat. Um, and honestly, being in the room at Insight when each of the successful parts come in, we have successfully separated. We've successfully pointed towards the atmosphere. We've made it through the atmosphere, deploying the parachute. Parachute successfully deployed. I mean, and seven then minutes terror. Yeah, so amazing, so inspiring. I mean, I I got choked up. For a couple of days afterwards, each time I was telling someone the story. What, what was the room? I mean, was the room operating in in real time with the two minute delay the whole time, mm-hmm. or was there like a two minute period where like, okay, well, it should be down now, but we are not going to know. No, it was basically you were getting the real time update that was two minutes okay. late. Wow. Um, and Is- so at each stage, things were, people were clapping, um, and I have footage of the actual final like forty meters, twenty meters, three meters touchdown, oh, and just deathly silent until touchdown oh. i mean just nobody moving at all sure because was, the, i went with alan eustace oh awesome mm-hmm. yeah uh who did the the jump the, yeah, the yeah. World record breaking um so we watch this via streaming and i think nasa does a fantastic job with their mixing of produ- pro- their video production of communicating what's going on in this event because a lot of the awareness for this and they had over half a million people watching is in those like few days right like Mm -hmm. most of the people don't know didn't know what insight was or maybe they followed it a couple months ago but like now they're getting reinvigorated and they did a fantastic job with the commentary with building up the anticipation 
and I was really curious what it was like. Did they have that commentary in the same room you were in? Yes. Um, so it was being so through? we were getting that same feed, and then uh, above the control room, they had the. You can see here they had the list of uh, things that it was doing and a timeline moving past them. It, that was intensely accurate. Oh, it's like all the graphics they were cutting between. Mm -hmm. And then they had a, a CG model of the Insight Lander as it was hitting the atmosphere, as it was entering. It wasn't perfectly timed to the launch, as you could imagine. That's difficult to nail, but it still was super instructive. The JPL mission You'll, control looks so much cooler than the ones in Houston. <laughs> Dude, it's like amazing. they have the purple lights. It looks like a movie set, LA movie magic. I guess. And that panorama photo you just showed us, it looks much cooler than the close ups that we saw. I, they had the, the, I will send these to you so you can post yeah, them underneath this. Love to. It was really, really neat. It was also, cool. honestly, um, I just love to point out a lot of women uh, in mission control at JPL. That was delightful to see. Uh, the the folks there, I know a few a few people at JPL. Obviously, Bobax is a friend of the a friend of Tested, uh, Adam Stelzer, Kevin Hand, and they just they all so again. I love saying this. Like every scientist I know loves their jobs, and the folks that I know at JPL, man, they love their jobs so hard. It's just great, and we got to see them walking around, talking to people at the at the launch, at the landing. Sorry, it has to be a little like I mean, there's a I have to imagine there's a lot of tension. That is then followed up by a, like a minor celebration, which is then followed up by, a, OK, time to get to work kind of. I think you're exactly right. You're exactly right. And then, I mean, <clears throat> as a, 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 a gentleman engineer, I guess, uh, I woke up that morning stressed, stressed on behalf of oh, yeah. all the engineers, because as one of them said, 10,000 separate things have to go right for this to work and only one of them has to go wrong. So what was their level of confidence in the room? I mean, everyone has private feelings about it. NASA publicly never, you know, they, they always hedge a little bit and, and relay the risks. But in, in talking to the people there, did you get a sense that people were like anticipating failure or just bracing themselves? I didn't themselves get that sense, or? but I, I really wasn't thinking of, pol of polling for that. Yeah, I, would, I don't think I'd want to be the guy walking around going, so what do you think our chances of success are with three <laughs> yeah, hours to go? That's, someone pointed out years ago in an advice column that if you tell someone like, ah, my dad's dying of cancer, some of your friends will always just go, hey, how's that problem you're dealing with? How's your cancer dad? Yeah. Right? That's all they want to talk about. And ever since I read that, I, I've made a point of not asking the, the direct question about the thing that could go wrong today. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, it's not in but my the nature to go around. Good. Spirits were very good. It was a very light atmosphere, we're, and it's beautiful Pasadena. We're, we're on, as a species, a pretty hot streak with Mars yeah, compared we are. to like the early late 90s, early 2000s. So that, f frankly, talking about that hot streak, the thing about the, the landing that was the most emotional to me was touchdown was great, and then there was a lot of celebrating, and then there was... The uh, waiting for the amount of data to come through for the photo. For the first photo. For the first photo. With the lens cap and then, on one. So yeah. everyone's, everyone's, you know, there's jocularity and hugging, and then the photo's starting to come in. So now everyone gathers around a computer screen. Are they screen. literally watching just like one line of pictures? It's like loading I, I don't a know. GIF in <laughs> I don't know. Right. <laughs> the way they showed it in The Martian. Yeah. 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 But we, we, we're, we see all the engineers gathered around a single computer, and then we see them go, yeah. And then the image comes up and you realize you're looking at the another planet's horizon and it just like it, I, I got choked up. So good. Mind blowing. So good. We did that from billions of miles away. Well, this was a much this was also a much less like compared to the Curiosity landing where they had the the. Still what rolling, like an insane, still rolling, but, but like <laughs> an insane plan, right? Like we're going to we're going to do some retro rockets and hover and drop a platform 16 or 20 feet or something. And then the rover is going to drive off and then the rocket parts going to go fly off and crash someplace, hopefully away from the rover. If it all works out, OK, maybe we're not going to flip it over. Like this one seemed pretty staid compared to that. Yeah. And that's the next one, right? The next they're one another will one be The next rover. one is another sky crane. Yeah. 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 Uh, it'll well, be I, 2020. I don't, I don't know if they're going to do the sky crane oh, okay. again. I thought that I, I heard that, but I could be I, wrong. I mean, I feel like that. I feel like the plan, the thing that they pitched was we're going to do Curiosity just with some different instrumentation and like what we've learned is going to change. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I mean, sky crane worked once. Why not try it again? It uh, so... Ah. So amazing. Very I uh, cool. I loved being in the room. I met lots of amazing people from museums and science institutions from all over the country. It was a, a fantastic day. Thank you, Alan. Uh, that was a tremendous, tremendous day. You think we'll get to a point where we're doing that for a person landing on Mars? In, <laughs> in our lifetime? In our lifetime? I, um, I yeah. have this conversation with my kid all the time. Because she wants to go. She's like ready. She wants to. We, we do planet books. And she's like, I want to go to Mars, Dad. I'm like, well, 
you know, I just look. Yeah, I, I appreciate what he does, but I hope that person isn't Elon Musk. Seventy percent. Because chance. I just imagine him landing on Mars and going, "Suck it, haters." <laughs> <laughs> Hey, 420 someplace. I'm all up in your planet. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like. I don't hope that he doesn't succeed. Yeah. I, 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 that's you hope not, he's not the first one. I just hope he's not the first one. That's yeah, all. You want some great steps for mankind I or do. something like that. I want that. emotion. Not, I want, uh, not, I'd rather, yeah. It's got to be on behalf of humanity. The best of us. The best of us. Before we continue with this episode, I want to let you know that this episode was also made possible by LinkedIn because the right hire can make a huge impact on your business. One of the reasons that we love working at Tested is because of all the great people we've hired and work with and makes a huge impact on our day to day. But finding the right person can be hard. So instead of just posting on a job board, which most people don't check, post your job to a place where people go to every day to make connections, grow in their career and discover job opportunities. And that's LinkedIn. Most LinkedIn members haven't recently visited the top job boards, but nine out of 10 members are open to new opportunities. 70% of the U.S. workforce is on LinkedIn, so it's the best place to get your job opportunity in front of people who are qualified for your role and ready for something new. It's the best way to find the right person who will help you grow your business. And that's why a new hire is made every 10 seconds using LinkedIn. Hurry to linkedin.com slash untitled and get $50 off your first job post. That's linkedin.com slash untitled to get $50 off your first job post. Again, linkedin.com slash untitled old terms and conditions apply now back to the conversation um hey speaking of the opposite of the best of yeah. us i can't stop watching the americans that's a very good tv show um we 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 you, when i first told you i was watching it you said suitcase and Warm i didn't know what suitcase, you meant yeah. mm-hmm. and uh i got to i think it's the second or third episode in the third season yeah and we, I we should probably this, say they're going to be spoilers here. Yeah. Okay. We're not going to talk about anything but the Americans from this point out. I don't. Think, yeah, right? I think this is so. This is yeah. spoiler. If you haven't watched the Americans, first of all, if you can manage the stress level, I recommend watching it. I find it mind-blowingly great. Uh, 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 Matthew Reese and uh, Carrie Russell, the two stars of it, along with their entire supporting cast, those two are mind-blowing. And Matthew Reese is Welsh, right? He's. I, I don't, he is I don't not, know. He is, he is not, not American. Is, yeah. he's Nor got is he this, Russian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Much like Andrew Lincoln on Walking yeah. Dead. Um, it's, absolutely incredible. Uh, and the two of them are just such wonderful actors. Well, the, Great chemistry. So, yeah. Uh, I mean. Synopsis. In a though. non-spoiler perspective, the setup is that they are Russian deep deep cover spies mm-hmm. who have been set up in America with a family. Their kids don't know they're spies at the beginning of the show. Right. Yep. Um, they... they I have an FBI agent who is like their, the, their best, best friend, friend and, and next neighbor. door neighbor and they don't like each other. Like that's the thing that that's like, how it begins. They, yeah. they respect each other a lot. Clearly well, she's so, yeah. That's actually one of the most fascinating things about the show is the emotional landscape of the trauma of living this fake double life like and making it your whole life, making it your whole life. And so the, 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 the it's a fascinating meditation on marriage, frankly, because the, they they have a fake marriage, but real children that they both really love. Yeah, and they have to partner to do this. And the the tension of that marriage and the kids, which is tension in and of itself, plenty for everybody. Capitalist pigs, along with the fact that they're train killers, <laughs> and they <laughs> hate everyone around. Like 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 they 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 are in a religious the equivalent of a religious war yep. against the place where they live. It's fascinating, fascinating, um, and the levels of that complexity that plays across their faces as they as they move through the narrative of this show is something that I find endlessly fascinating. It, it's just just unpacking a performance. It's the kind of show that like I'm not going to say this cuz I don't want to do it, I don't think. But it, it, like each episode has something a, a level of complexity with a performance that there's something to unpack and figure out, okay, that this actor, this actor is doing this and, and this is leading to this and this is leading to this and this is leading to this. And all of these motivations are showing and it's, it's astounding. Well, there's, so this isn't a spoiler because this happens a lot. You, at one point, Carrie Russell is working, uh, 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 is working somebody Mm -hmm. and she's pretending to be somebody else. And she's romantically involved with this person. And you've seen this several times before they, they both have romantic entanglements with people that they are running as it were. It's not glamorous. No, it's so, so not glamorous, but at a certain point in this 
romantic entanglement with the person that Carrie Russell's character is running, she becomes emotionally moved. And she's able in the love scene with the person to show you that she's moved past the point. So she's showing you, the, like she's able to show you this puppet show and then pull the curtains a little bit so you can see her real personality well, well, in the middle of there's this. There's the performance for the character that she plays. Mm -hmm. There's the performance for the person that she's playing. And then there's the performance for us watching at home. It's, and it's, it is a tour de force. I, I, I assume this show has won a bunch of awards. I don't yeah. know. Okay, good. That makes me feel better. I, it stuck the landing from what I've read. So that was, I was waiting for it to. Is this is done now, right? Reese has won an Emmy okay. and she has not. Oh. Uh, Carrie Russell has not mm. won an Emmy for this as far as I know. So, so. And she really deserves it. <laughs> um, I, I I, I haven't finished the whole thing. I got to where you are now and okay. was like, I've got to take a break for a while. And so, that was maybe six months or a year and, ago. And frankly, uh, up till now, we've been in a now a full binge where we're watching two or three hours every night. But for the longest time, we could watch one episode every few days because we found it's, them so stressful. It, we needed time to recover. It's very much a like, I wish I had been watching one episode a week and talking about it. It's as really it intense. Um, but. Let's go towards spoilers. Yeah, spoiler time. Holy crap balls, the suitcase episode yeah. is so, so crazy. And this this scene alone, if you haven't watched it, will sell you on the show. So we'll set it up a little bit. Uh, they, are, they have a mark in a hotel that they need to get information out of. And so they plant it so it looks like he killed someone or he does kill someone. Oh, no, he... They've been running an agent that's getting information from him. And that agent goes a little rogue and she falls in love with her mark. And she reveals to him that she is working for someone else, and he immediately kills her. Right. In a, in, in, in a, it's a, I guess it's a crime of passion because later on you realize he really is conflicted and upset about it, but he kills her instantly. Little late. Yeah. And then they. Come right. In. So Carrie Russell, Matthew Reese are next door listening to this murder, and they need to, this guy not to get caught because there's still playing him but they need more than him not to get caught they need to dispose of the body and so they walk in the hotel room they get him out of there and then it's a montage which is well mostly so, by ahead. sound yeah so so <laughs> th to even further set the scene the God, moment at which I'm, she reveals yeah. to him that she's working for someone else is just post coital so they're both completely naked and by the way this show is a show in which you're going to see every human in the show's butt except for the children like yeah. everybody is it's a it, it's on amc <laughs> is that right I, I actually I don't know uh, FX. FX FX okay um you see everybody's butt so these these are two uh, 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 very well proportioned humans but one of them is now dead on the floor this naked woman on the floor these things happen Carrie Russell shows up with a, a suitcase and now they have to put this body it doesn't fit they have to get into out of the suitcase get out they have of the to room. get it out of the hotel room it, it, without anyone and it's noticing. not it's the eighties so it's <laughs> not like they have a fucking enormous. 50 gallon Samsonite that roll on. They no, have like a normal a ass size set case. case. Yeah. yeah. And um, they start to take this body and they start to break the, they start to oh, break God, the limbs horrible. at the elbows and the shoulders in order to make this body don't, small enough. Don't listen to this. Don't watch this episode before you spatchcock the turkey. Oh my God. Because it's a little, yeah. So the very first. I, I have to say the sound design is perfect. They really nailed it so, because every if you've ever bent a turkey leg until it snaps, this is exactly what the they tendon, were doing. Tendon and ligament popping sound. Microphones. And my wife ran into the bathroom and turned on the shower so that she couldn't hear it. And meanwhile, I'm in the other room going, oh, no way. Uh, is this one you turned around and watched again immediately following? Or, uh, no, I was period. just, I was really impressed. Um, number one, the way they shoot it is excellent, and it is all sound design. There's no blood at all in this scene. Mm -hmm. There's very little blood in the movie in general, in, in the show in general. There's a, when they when they when they um, you know, when yep. he dispatches the guy at the San Eastern training camp, and you actually watch the knife carve into his in neck. In general, <laughs> you're right. I mean, the first like the first season, there's a lot of people that get killed, but it's not super gory. It's it is difficult to watch despite being it's not a thriller, gory. not oh, horror. Like, yeah. As an aside, during that San Eastern training camp bet. Um, <coughs> Sorry. My wife turns to me and she's like, it's been a while since anyone's gotten killed. Look oh. at his face. I think he's going to kill someone soon. And literally less than a minute later, he's <laughs> sawing a knife through some kid's neck. But in this episode, they're, they're cracking the bones and I'm looking at it and it doesn't look like a silicone arm. It looks to me like they were creatively shooting with a contortionist in order to get oh. this body to look both completely real and bent in ways that shouldn't 
a, be allowed. allowed. Uh -huh. um, so I'm curious. I, I haven't gone looking for this information. I so just watched this a couple of nights ago. But I'm curious if anyone knows whether or not they hired a contortionist for parts of this it. episode as a body double. It's um, I think not since Breaking Bad and The Bath. In the first season, well, I actually such think such it's an interesting a box way. cutter was the thing that I felt was closest to this. Uh, I, did, I, I only cutters, watched the first season of Breaking Bad because oh, it was too much for me. Remember, uh, Gustavo kills someone and he kills them right in front of Walt and uh, uh, Jesse uh, while staring at them. So he slices a guy's neck and holds this guy while he dies, staring at them in the at face. Walt at and Walt and Jesse. Jesse. I'm just talking about <laughs> body disposals. In right. terms of disposal. Oh, spoiler alert. The, oh, you're right, body. Yeah, disposal. the 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 don't put the hydrofluoric <laughs> acid in the bathtub if it's not ceramic. That's good advice, it turns out. Hydrofluoric acid wouldn't dissolve that body. We tested it. We did a Mythbusters episode on was it. Was it hydrofluoric that they used? It was hydrofluoric yeah. because he was thinking that uh, if hydrochloric is bad, hydrofluoric ought to be worse because well, it it's is. higher up on the... But yes, not in the way that Worse they in totally to different yeah. ways. It turns out that if you want to uh, really dispose of a body, you've got to use this stuff... I don't think I'm still, I think I'm still not allowed to say the name, but it's basically <laughs> like a super amped up sulfuric acid that for us disposed of the body, uh, the, the pig's carcass that we put in the bathtub in less than two minutes. Bones and all? Oh yeah. But, but oh, it also, not, I don't, I don't it like that filled voice. this, it filled this house with blacks. I mean, literally it would ruin the house. You'd yeah, have to yeah. burn the house to the ground when you were done. So why not just burn the house to well, the ground? Body problem. Well, cause the burning the house to the ground won't get rid of the bones. <laughs> Bits of teeth and bones. <laughs> when the when the when the fire marshal comes through, he finds this a bunch is, of teeth and bones in your freshly the, burned down house. He's gonna have some real questions for you, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, we noticed you had some some bones and teeth here. Yeah. Chlorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine, iodine and acetine. No, I don't remember the last one. I think it's it's acetine. The fluorine. The That's reason the, hydrofluoric is bad is because the fumes will kill you. The, the not actually it's worse than that if you get a couple of drops of hydrofluoric acid on your skin what it does is it bonds instantly with calcium in the same way that halon that's gas right. does with that's oxygen right. so it will slowly kill you from the inside yeah. out dissolving your bones oh, yeah. that's how nasty it is we we were able to use tiny amounts of this in one of the labs at cal with the full vent hood and all these i mean it was intense. do you mean our friend phil over there phil broughton he's a lab Plausibly. he's a safety radiation safety guy at cal and lawrence livermore i think plausibly and he's he has he has he used to run a great blog called i think he still does it called fundranium labs among other things where he talks about the many different ways that things in your lab can kill you <laughs> <laughs> and how undergraduates should never be allowed to have, like he has a lot of that anyway, sounds like things I won't guy. work with another one of my it's favorite much like organic that. chemistry yes. blogs yes, yes, yes. <laughs> one of my favorite organic chemistry yeah, blogs yeah, yeah it's, I got a I got a, a, a binder full of blogs anyway uh, so we, the suitcase it was a suitcase yeah that I was really impressed and I I'm kind of hoping it doesn't get much worse than that because that was intense there's a thing that I love about that show which is that it looks like they use a lot of ambient lighting it was it's old enough now that it was probably er, relatively early on shooting full digital mm -hmm. and they're shooting it in a way that looks very much the way I remember the 80s looking like 80s suburbia like you went to your grandparents house and they had two lamps in the living room and at night yeah. it just got dark and they do a lot of this you're like watching people walk from a room distant on, into the room and they're just in darkness a good portion of the time yeah I also think it's worth pointing out how great the Russians are in that show the Russian cast you go you spend a lot of time in the Russian embassy with the Russian KGB the mm -hmm. Residentura um, all of those actors are fantastic I don't know how well they speak Russian maybe some of them are terrible like the extras on MASH but um, they're fantastic it's the the whole thing is it's it's just a real I, I would say it's a pleasure to watch, but it's really hard it for me really to watch hard usually. To watch, totally true. Yeah, it's like it's it's a really it's an it's it's I mean it reminds me a lot of Mad Men in the in the attention that's given to the period and all that stuff. Um but it is it is intensely difficult to watch. I, I I think the most we ever watched was like two episodes in a night, and I, I, we often would do like, hey, let's watch, let's watch. Uh, oh, over over Monday Thanksgiving, night. over Thanksgiving week, I think we watched all of season three in about a day and a half. Oh boy, yeah, we were we were burning through it. That was really enjoyable. Uh, <laughs> well, when you finish that, you should watch the Fargo TV series. I and so like body like disposal. on my list is Fargo. Um, I want. I have still not seen Deadwood. I know I'm an asshole. Oh, Deadwood's um, really good. Uh, I've movie. also been hearing about really? the Patriot. Is amazing. I've never seen. Um, don't know that one. Is I, that the Patriots about a CIA agent station? From what I understand, 
I could get this totally wrong. I've heard that it's a CIA agent stationed in Amsterdam who starts participating in an open mic night, which is not necessarily the best thing to do for a no. CIA agent. It seems like it would be ill-advised. <laughs> um, a good friend of mine said it's totally amazing. Okay. So I well, it's kind of like out. the flip side of the Bill Hader series. Or... Uh, Barry. Yeah. yeah. Um, again, <laughs> I can't stop wanting to say from Barry, this arm is basically bullshit. <laughs> I uh, we've been we've been we started on Brooklyn Nine Nine, which I hadn't watched. Dude. I watched the first like half season, and it kind of didn't grab me. And how I, amazing is and that it's, show? It is an incredible piece of work. Like it's it is, never it not is, wonderful. No, every episode, like the first few episodes, are, are a little like they they kind of found a rhythm, and then it got Michael Shuri after that, and it gets real good. It started the second season, picks up in never stops so far. That so. is a show that that deeply loves even its worst humans. Every yeah, every everyone. <laughs> Everyone is um, everyone is represented accurately for the like the character portrayals are true and the characters are deeply internalized. And it's really good. I also think that uh, 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 Andy Samberg gave my favorite Emmy speech ever when he mm. unexpectedly won Best Actor in a Comedy uh, series for the what Emmys. Um, he didn't expect to win, and he got up and he kind of improvisationally skewered um, Emmy speeches <laughs> where he's like, mm, "Well." This is awesome. Oh, I got. I guess I got to thank my team. My team is great. Oh, boy. <laughs> and, I mean, it was one thing after the other. And meanwhile, you kept cutting to his his fellow actors, and they were just, like, pissing themselves Laughing. at this amazing yeah. skewering of the Emmy speech. God boy. bless them. Not everyone has that note in their pocket. No. That that no. that was pretty impressive. Yeah. Thank your family. I love they Brooklyn like me. They really like me. Yeah. Um, uh, I have, have to give a recommendation for uh, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. I've, everyone's it's been emailing list, me and yeah. texting me saying this is incredible. It is the uh, Coen Brothers' new film. Uh, or a was, series of films. It's an anthology, so it's uh, just six short stories packaged in two hours uh, on Oh, Netflix. just two hours total? Yeah. Oh. yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a movie. It's a, it's a, movie. It's a film. They, they, you could watch uh, It's in select <laughs> theaters around the country, so it's really they're pitching it as a film, uh, and it's really good. I remember going to my parents. I was probably seven. My sister was four five and we were trying to get them to take us to a movie what would it have been it would have been in like the early 70s it's like chitty chitty bang bang or something like no that's oh, late 60s that's right late 60s or like uh, bed nubs and broom sticks maybe was yeah it something like that thing? escape from which mountain yeah and i remember running to my parents because all the ads would say this and we said we gotta go see it mom dad it's playing at a theater near you <laughs> <laughs> and they laughed and we didn't know we were being funny. There's a there's a beautiful thing that kids at that at like that are like five or six do that is just like they'll take a thing that they hear and they'll repeat it and they'll say it's it's a limited time only, Dad. We've got to go right now. Yeah. It's yeah. Exactly. Advertising works on small children. It turns out. Who knew? <laughs> this is our feature presentation. Have, have I not to, just to finish this, I was present not only the first time my children walked, but I was present when they watched their first commercial. Oh, oh. And uh, it was late. I think my son was probably, I think my boys were probably, I don't know, 20 months. Your kids were born right around the millennium, like 98? 99. 99, yeah. yeah. So, so you would have had a TiVo or something and not watched ads probably, Yeah, right? uh, actually, uh, they woke up and on the only time they really watched television was on the weekends. And we would just watch the Teletubbies or <laughs> we'd watch uh, uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory over and over again. It was yeah. a Totoro. There was just an endless stream of things we watched repeatedly. And one morning, the DVD player broke. Oh, if I remember correctly, when I opened it up to figure out why it was broken, it was full of qu quarters and Cheerios. <laughs> oh, what an amazing coincidence. <laughs> Your wife, and, your wife really messed that up. And huh? one of the quarters had shorted across oh, two leads oh, on the board. Nice. Um, but so I turned on regular television and the kids tell they were like, well, this is new. And they're watching, I don't know, Spider-Man or Transformers. And then the commercials happened. And I'm like, I'm just sort of curious about this. Right. And it's immediately like Toys R Us, blah, 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 blah. There's one kids playing with stuff. Da, 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 da. And my son's just like the thing too is just watching this. And when the commercial finishes, he turns around to me and he goes, I want that. Yeah. And I was like, wow, That's, that was instantaneous. It, 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 <laughs> It, it, it my daughter's reaction was similar at first she was like what is this what is this thing that's interrupting my because she grew up like she was watching we were watching stuff on Netflix and yeah. she didn't see a commercial for probably the first 
two years she was exposed mm-hmm. to TV and movies and stuff. Yeah. And then one day we, we she she wanted to watch something that was on Disney, so I loaded up the Disney app and there's commercials on in between shows on that. Without the commercial, without yeah. growing up with commercials, you can never grow up to a point where you can buy all the things that you never could afford <laughs> as a kid in those commercials and feel awesome about it. Well she was that is <laughs> Oh man, Norm, that Norm, is a, I just a died a little bit in your sign. psyche there. <laughs> Um, that is that is punchy Norm who hasn't had yeah, enough sweets. If you I didn't like her true. Norm, if you did awesome. not want, then you, <laughs> yeah. If you did not know want, I'm still pissed. I never got an ad at a Kenner ad at when I was a kid. I oh, could have bought one, but what now was it's the too thing late. I really? I mean, my parents weren't very wealthy growing up, so I remember the very first time I got something that I wanted. Like I remember, yeah. The first the that I I got a Millennium Falcon when I was five, and it was a life changing toy for me. It was a Fisher Price Airport for me. Mm. Uh, that was the I, yeah. That was the first time like with the little choking hazard people. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Ones. With yeah. The, it had the 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 air traffic control. Yeah, tower. that was a cool one. Yeah, I really had that like at daycare that. when I was a, when I when I would go to the state that lady's house. I think we could go on for hours. Yeah, it's probably yeah. time to stop. You know what's even better than buying the thing that you had that you saw in the commercial? <laughs> yeah, what, no, buying the actual thing in the the commercial itself. Which is one of the things that's happening <gasps> wow. this Saturday. He may be tired, I ladies know. and gentlemen, but yeah. there is no... Norm never forgets. No. Yeah, uh, this Saturday, uh, our friends at Prop Store and actually came by the office this week to show us some of these props. Holy uh, hell, what from, they brought to us. Uh, from this collection. Just to take a look at. Yeah, this, this collection uh, from this guy it named James like Commissar. Have, yeah. And he, over the past 30 years, since 1989 has collected just television memorabilia. James Commissar uh, realized way early how important television was and chronicling, and this collection, just what they're selling at Prop Store is an astounding collection, but what he has is such an important compendium of television history. Yes. Uh, it's really incredible. Well, and it's stuff that I would have thought was lost because it was from the time before people saved this stuff and it would have <laughs> just gone out in the dumpster behind the back lot. This is, I mean, Hollywood has never been known for its own archive tendencies they look toward uh, the future not the past absolutely I, debbie reynolds collection being sold off was a real tragedy um this is an incredible offering that they have this catalog blew my mind as i, I walked through. and i know it's the kirk and spock togas from the roman episode of trek yep. tos there yeah, the, uh, stepchild uh, plato i think plato's stepchildren um the bat shield the bat shield from the, Batman wow, the unfolding one uh-huh the unfolding one <laughs> I mean, if, if you got the money, and I, not I, all I want to make one. Playhouse. I want to make one as a one-day build. Oh. A bat shield. Promises are made. Oh man, you said it now. I've said I'm it now. Done. Not cutting it out of the podcast. Boy, wonder get the pod, get the podcast, get the bat shield. Yeah, that was a. I don't know. What, I don't even know. That wasn't an impression or anything. That, no, that was just like your yeah, bad. You could buy the Toys R Us Jeffrey the Draft costume that was in the commercial. The in the commercial. That that things you saw. Yeah, crazy. Um, uh, I liked the the um, Pillsbury oh, the, the actual Pillsbury, Pillsbury Doughboy. So the, one of wow. the things they have after Pillsbury Doughboy here is um, a couple of Hershey's Kisses of the Dancing Hershey's Kiss commercials. Yes. Um, and oh, yeah, I Pepsi thought that it might be that. one that I had made because when I was working for Jamie in the early 90s, uh, my friend Carl Willett directed all of those Hershey's Kiss commercials back in the early 90s. <laughs> and I sculpted hundreds of those bastards. Um, but no, this comes from a time later than my uh, tenure. They had one of the pig noses from the Twilight Zone episode with the with the horrible disfigured woman that you never see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They have Shirley Puffin stuff costume from wow. Sid Marty Croft. Yeah, there's a lot of Marty, Sid Marty Croft stuff they in there. They have Davy and Goliath stop motion puppet. Wow. I mean, that is... Lauren Michaels should buy those and do something terrible with them. I mean, I know not everyone is in the prop collecting and original prop collecting because it is, you know, these are... It's an expensive hobby, but I what like, I really appreciate yeah. is the the putting together of the catalog. So they worked for a year on this catalog, and it really, really shows. It has this catalog is maybe the best catalog I've ever seen come from Prop Store. I just like flipping through and looking at the pictures. I'm not I'm, realistically, I'm not going to buy anything, <laughs> but it is fascinating to see what's out there. What what is it? Hold on, is that? I think this is Heroes. Uh, yeah, <coughs> Heroes. It is Heroes. Heroes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then there's stuff from uh, Lost here. Oh my God! I mean, so it's this is literally the entire history of television from Star Trek: The Original Series stuff going way, wow. way, way back. Mork and Mindy, Elvira's wig. Yeah, this this thing is insane. And outside of museum exhibits, which have catalog, great catalogs of their own, you know, you're not going to find a lot of institutions that are set up to keep these right in mopop or museum of pop culture in seattle museum of moving image in new york mm-hmm. maybe the academy museum when that opens up but those are very expensive yeah 
to, to run. And so this is one of the few chances to actually see these out in the open. Um, and, and have your cool. So uh, the actions this weekend? Yeah, it's on Saturday, and we have a bunch of videos where Brandon from Prop Store came up and showed us a bunch of stuff, and we got close looks at People a lot of props. Want to find out more? Prop Store. Prop Store. Com. Com. Yeah. That was awesome. See you guys next week. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.